Quorum. All right, um, I'm going to call to order the July 11th meeting of the Economic Development Commission. Um, the meeting is being recorded. Um, the agenda is as I had shown. Why is it not showing up? You are screen sharing, but I can't see it. Okay. Um, after our normal uh, administrative things, we have a marketing update from Greta, a review of the Community Campus Grant, and feedback from the Select Board presentation a couple of days ago. And then uh, Old Business will have an update on the tourism temporary working groups and actually a discussion, I think, of what is the EDC's role in addressing those issues versus the role of, say, the trustees and, and other groups in town. Um, some of us have had some offline discussions that, um, and the, and the uh, trustees have been doing some work, and I think those two things together suggest that perhaps we might uh, shift our role a little bit. So um, are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? Let me just see one thing. Sorry, I've just, so I can see all of you better now. Can you all still see the screen share? Yes. Okay, great. All right, if there are no additions or deletions, are there any citizen comments? Uh, for those non-EDC members who are here, we typically take comments on the topics that were on the agenda during the meeting rather than at the beginning, and there's usually time for that. So if you have a comment on something that's not on the agenda, now is a good time to make it. And if you can just... Raise your hand, uh, Takis. Oh, sorry, that you're not raising your hand. That's my hand. That's on. Thank your God, side. because I have not raised my hand, John. All right. <laughs> well, Takis, that doesn't matter. If I call on you, you better have a comment to make. Uh, are there any? Are there any other comments? Any comments? No. All right. Hearing none. Uh, we'll go to the first item, which is a marketing update. Greta and I will put up your slide here. Hold on. Can you see that? Yes. I think the only thing that might be blocked, at least it is on my screen, is the end of 2024 at the very top. Everything else is visible. I can see that. <clears throat> Great. All right. So Jess was unfortunately, Jess Kirby, our marketing um, person, was not able to make it tonight. But um, we are going to be giving just a really brief update a uh, month by month on what's going on. We gave her three objectives when we um, selected her proposal, and two of those are well underway, um, and I can kind of get into that. Um, so some of the stats we wanted to share with you guys this this month um, was how much the users visiting with stockvt.com has increased. Um, as far as the local community. And that's really important. That's one of the the things we discussed last year when we were really considering what we wanted to do with the marketing and communications program and what um, what were some ways to improve it and add value for wood, people in Woodstock and the surrounding area. So the fact that um, June 2024 saw a 44% increase in people visiting our website um, in the local community over the previous June is really huge. Um, and, and then the second um, data point right underneath it is also interesting because um, it shows the total number of sessions on the website um, continues to be oh. largely organic search traffic. And um, that means that people are finding WoodstockVT.com just for putting in keywords in Google or something like that. They're not necessarily saying Woodstock, Vermont, but they might be saying Point Town in Vermont or New England Getaway or things like that. And it's leading them to our website, which is great. But um, a huge part of um, what we think is likely an, another reason that the the local users are going up is um, the direct traffic is has shot up 65% um, in the last year. And that means that people are specifically typing in WoodstockBT.com to get there. And um, the assumption is just that the, the events calendar has been um, really been updated consistently and um, it's it's being populated with a ton of things to do. Um, and Jess is also doing a lot of work on keywords and other things just to really um, boost the site's um, efficiency and searchability and functionality. Most of you know we, we are working on a um, site that we are considering um, 
building a new one, a new website that would be a little bit more user friendly for the people visiting our site and also for the administrators. So that's that's something that we're it's kind of an ongoing um, initiative for us. Um, below that, you can see the top six pages visited in the last month that remains consistent um, with what we've seen in the last 12 months. And people are, you know, they'll go, they get to the homepage and from there, they're largely looking for things to do and what's happening that week. Um, and then just kind of a, an overall, um, you know, takeaway is that in the, this last year, we did cut the marketing budget by 50%, um, but luckily our impact is still growing. And um, one of the and the objectives that we provided just with for this year was to look for an increase of 5% sales in the retail, um, 5% increase in retail sales in Woodstock for June and July. And um, that's kind of, um, it's not a hard number that we're using just because we're also going to look at data from last year and also compare it against the state in general. And there's, you know, we're, we're just looking for a good amount of growth there and the sales numbers aren't available for June yet, but, um, we're hoping to, to see some, some, um, some good numbers and, um, go from there. And then the other objective that she's currently working on consistently is the events calendar. Uh, I know that a lot of the local community has been, um, really praising that saying it's great to have everything um or most of everything shown in one place and jess has also been doing a great job of getting the weekly list out um every week on instagram and facebook and things like that just to really draw attention to what's happening so um and and then the third objective which we aren't quite working on yet just because um we are right here in june and july and there are um, things that we're working on first is we had assigned the task of getting um, qualified leads for school choice and given um, a lot of things that are happening at the state level and at our town level, as far as um, the high school build and everything, we are, um, that that is an objective that might shift um, in the next few months. So that is something we're not quite focused on yet. But um, does anyone have any questions on this? One of the, I didn't mention a ton of stuff about, you know, social media um, numbers, but there's a consistent growth there that's kind of been the what we've seen over the last few years. There's a lot of engagement. Um, but as Jess said, um, she was the one who kind of guided this update. Um, she said that it's really with the way Instagram is specifically year over year, it's really hard to compare, um, you know, to June 2024 to June 2023, because the algorithm is algorithm is constantly changing. And in 2023, there was a lot of still shots in the grid. And now it's all about reels and stuff like that. So it's, um, there's a lot of engagement happening there. There's consistent growth. It's just hard to compare hard numbers um, year to year. And okay, are there any questions or comments? No, okay. All right, Greta, thank you. Okay, um, a review of the community campus grant. Um, we've had a request from the folks from the community campus to uh, change the condition of their grant from the average capacity to, sorry, from the average number of kids served. I'll get this in the wrong place, sorry. From an increase in the actual number of children served, which was what the current grant condition is to an increase in their capacity to serve 32 children. Yes. And so, um, and so I think, oh, Kate, are you going to be the one? Yeah. So I have a presentation. I was hoping to, and um, we clarified the request a little bit in the presentation. I can share that with you too, um, for the record. Um, but if you'd like, to, do you want to present it or just? I would love to. Off? I would love to. So I just want to make sure I can. Yeah. Hold on. Let me just give you the run. Okay, you should be able to. Okay. And Kate, can you tell us what you you know what your role is at TCC? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, first, I have to negotiate Zoom and multiple screens, That's which fine. is always a, a challenge, cognitive challenge for me. Okay, is it on yet? I haven't seen it yet, but. Oh. Myself, just as the board uh, president of TCC. Yes, Christy, go ahead. Sorry. 
And um, we also have Amy Jenny here who is on the board as well. Great. Great, and can you see it now? Yes. Excellent. Okay, and so, yeah, and my role is um, I'm on the board. Um, I was with the community campus at its inception. Um, I'm a special ed teacher here in the school district, and all of us are parents of children who attend um, TCC. Um, so we are, first of all, we wanted to share with you um, how we have used the funds thus far. Okay, so um, we hired a, um, a coordinator, uh, Susanna, um, who has really helped us in our capacity to grow. Um, we've also been able to hire two uh, high school students who have been uh, taking the role of teacher's aides. Um, and throughout the year, we've been able to ensure that we could provide in-ratio care for up to 36 children um, with three staff members on site at all time. Um, and the other thing that's really been impactful with our uh, ability to hire the coordinator is that we never turn away a uh, student, okay? Um, so our formal request, um, I just need to move the screen so I can see it. Um, we would like to formally uh, request that we amend our current grant to read a one-time grant of 3,000 to expand our program so that we can provide care for a monthly average of 32 children in attendance rather than a daily. And uh, 30,000, not, not three, 30. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, yep. Yeah. So, and, and we're going to go into why we feel like um, that is more in line with what we're seeing from our data and, and in our practice in, in the work that we do. Okay. Um, one second. So this is our original, um, the, the original grant um, that we received. Um, it's where, and I just wanted to highlight the part where we, you know, the, the funds were discontinued. We have uh, 7,071 re remaining. Um, and they were discontinued because we weren't able to meet that metric of 32 uh, children daily. Um, and so we would like- 32, well, sorry, 32, 32 average of 30, average daily, not yeah. every day. Yeah, um, and so we are hoping to amend that. Um, and we would like, uh, okay, so let me go to the next slide. So here's the, data we wanted to share and speak a little bit more to and um, what we as a board have uh, noticed and um, from this these data. Do we have this in our, do we get this ahead of time or no? I did not share this ahead of time, Todd, okay. so I can make sure it's shared. Yeah, just, just email to us. Yeah. It's a hard yeah, I'm day. sorry. Hard and you know, we're all, no, work, okay. sorry, we're all working know. moms, Todd. So we, you I'm know. A, I'm a single dad time. right now all summer long. My wife's on business yeah. trips, and so I get it. I get yeah. it. Okay. Todd, uh, I did send um, a copy of this, not the presentation, but this, the programming enrollment numbers did go to uh, John. And I believe you were on the email yesterday or the day before. So you did, you have this just not in the presentation format. Okay. All right. Thank you. So I did not, yeah. I'm, I'm not in Woodstock. And so I should have, I should have checked more carefully and sent it out. But anyway, we, we will, we may need some, some time to review this and so forth, but go okay. ahead, keep continuing. Yeah, yeah. of course. Thanks, John. Um, so we are thriving and growing and that's what these numbers show. Um, and we are providing essential, nurturing, high quality care and, in, and right now we are the only after school program for children's ages five through 16, okay? And we have, a, um, so we provide care for after school, uh, late start Wednesdays, in-service days, summer. Um, we also provide uh, weekend nights so parents can have a date night. Um, and we are, we also provide care for important community events, such as the high school walkthrough that have the multiple walkthroughs that happened. Okay. Our data. So if you look at our data, it shows a 50% growth in the average rate, um, since 2022, 
Our enrollment data shows that we are meeting and exceeding the number of 32 students enrolled in our program. And I wanna clarify on a section by section basis. So that's that pink rectangle highlighting that. So, you know, in the world of after school care, it's very different than uh, infant and toddler care in that parents really are looking for what we have found from our data and from talking to parents um, and just our enrollment data is that parents want flexible flex, flexibility. They need flexible care. Um, and so that is why we are having the variability within our, our daily average. Um, we're also seeing that there's, there's a need for developmentally uh, appropriate flexibility in that after school care for 15 through 16 year olds um, is very different than the care we need to provide for little, little ones. Um, because kids are access soccer, they access lacrosse, they do a whole host of things outside of, um, you know, that happen just on Tuesdays or just on Wednesday. So we really have found that um, saying that it's an all or nothing, you have to sign up for the week is a real barrier for families. Um, we also um, have variability in our data that I think is important to highlight just from a school educational perspective in that we um, are one of our core missions at TCC has always been universal access. We do not deny anybody. So which this, what this essentially means is where you may have one child who's, who is uh, the cost of one, you may have another child whose uh, needs are more like two or three. And these are data we cannot for confidentiality reasons or practical reasons add to this document right, the, 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 uh, the needs that some children have. Um, and so that also is impacts what we can do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so yes, while we have not met the average daily met metric um, specifically written in this grant, we are growing. We are the only game in town for after-school care. Um, and we are here to ask that this grant be amended to better reflect the reality of how our daily rate flexes to meet the needs of our current community. Um, and, you know, I wish we had known this a year ago, but this business is iterative. We learn as we go and we have to look at data and make decisions as a board and decisions as a community based on what we're seeing. Um, Oops, hold on, get to the next slide. Sorry, okay. Whoa. Um, and so we just wanted I, to- I can't read that, it's too uh, small here. Can we zoom in? Uh, say, yeah, let me try, hold on, Todd. Todd, you can, you can zoom in on the, that screen through your phone user, I just that? like, just as you would scroll in on any other web page. Oh, wow, Michael. Now I got a two finger pinch zoom going. All right, thank you, uh, Michael, for that tip, because that means yeah. I can, can still juggle three screens here. Um, okay, so what what we wanted to really think about and, and answer for you all is, you know, how many are we serving? And let's take a closer look at what, what this these data mean. Um, and so, you all are correct. We aren't. We aren't meeting the metric um, that we hoped. We are serving about 22 kids on average per day, um, and what we have learned. And I'm gonna speak a little bit about what this this these tab this table shows. But I just want to speak to what we're learned. What we've learned um, from our growth phase um, is that parents want the flexible system. Um, over the course of the past two and a half years, where we've um, had Logan Roddy, our excellent program director, who has really brought us forward um, as, as the community campus, um, is that we really learned that the best system, the, the way we can keep and retain families is with our flexibility and also by allowing a variety of different 
after, uh, after school options. So under our license, we can provide uh, summer programming, weekend programming, in-service programming, and that is what families need and want. And that is how we have um, increased our family capacity. Um, and so I'm sorry, I just want to be able to see what it, yeah. Yeah, so the other thing we notice in our data is that there are things that are really outside of our control um, in terms of being able to meet our metric. And one of them is family changes. That is something that we cannot control. Um, and we'll speak a little bit about that. Um, hold on one second. Um, and so we wish to change it because we think that a better metric is a section by section um, metric because what we are seeing is that um, the, the monthly average of students being served at 32 is more aligned with the actual needs in our community. Um, it also shows that we are providing options for families. We believe that um, our long-term success is really based on our ability to, to be a niche, to, to fill a uh, need across different types of families. Um, and we also wanted to say that we also are very intentional as a, as a, um, as a, as a group in, the, in our allocation of funds. One of our biggest priorities has been on hiring and retaining high quality staff. Um, you know, we are after school childcare uh, body. We are not a school system, but we work very similar, similarly to what schools do. Um, I've been in the education field for 26 years. And what I can say is we, the more high quality staff you have, you are going to keep and retain families and that only builds. And so where we're at right now is our summer program. So that's what these data are showing right here is we are an average of 30, 30 and a half for our summer program right now. We currently have 30 new children in our program. Um, the other thing is we have a waiting, we have a wait list for our summer at this point. And um, Logan has indicated that he gets multiple calls asking when are we gonna open up the after school um, enrollment? So again, because of our reputation of having two amazing staff members, um, we now are getting families kind of like trying to get on, on the list for after school care. Um, and then, hold on. And so, you know, the question is, which is a really valid question, and it's something we as a board have been wrestling too, was like, we have this amazing program, why don't we have more kids, right? So the, the, the one piece I keep coming back to is why is because of our flexible flexibility, but there's more, more to it that are really, that is out of our control. Um, another, so the cyclical nature of school age children, class sizes change, it waxes and wanes. Some, some years, the third graders all are doing one thing, so, right? So it, that's the nature of education. Um, and the parents are not, do not want to be locked in I can just speak anecdotally as a parent who had kids in the Woodstock after school program, I couldn't do it feasibly because I had to make a commitment as a parent a month in advance for after school care for my children. And I'd have to pay for days that they would go do soccer. So that that's a barrier. And what we're noticing is our flexibility, while it's not increasing our numbers, is allowing for more families to be part of our community. Um, the other piece that is, is, is very much out of our control is the affordability of our town. Um, we have lost families 
because they couldn't afford to live here. So we have lost children attending TCC because they had to move to a different school, different town to um, because they couldn't afford to live here. And then the last piece, which is, you know, an unsolved problem in our whole community and district is busing. Um, and, you know, that's, that's a huge piece. We have kids in Reading who would like to come here, but they cannot because we cannot get them on the bus. Right. So these are things that are out of our control. Um, and so that's, that's our presentation. Um, we really appreciate you all hearing that this, I hope I wasn't too repetitive. Again, I'm sorry I didn't get this out to y'all um, prior to this. Um, we as parents are incredibly grateful for the existence of our program. We don't know, I don't know, I don't know what a lot of parents would do without it. Um, we also think, I think about my own child who attends TCC and other, you know, other people's kids, they think of it as their home away from home and that really is our grace and indicator of success. So thank you. Um, I don't know if Amy or Christy wanted to add uh, to that or if you have any questions, um, we'll do our best to answer. Well, this is John. Let me just yeah. jump in and suggest thank you for the presentation. Um, I, it's, um, I think it's a lot of very interesting information. I'll just give you my quick reaction, which is a process point, not a substantive point. I don't want to stop a substantive discussion, but I think that there, it's complicated for those of us, first of all, just seeing the data for the first time. I apologize for not having sent it out, but I think even if we had, even if I had sent it out, <laughs> it's complicated for us to kind of really understand the numbers and and what if if precisely if precisely the average students per day is the wrong way to do a, a calculation of a numerator and a denominator you know which creates the average what exactly has is a better way to do that calculation and is the summer program at reaching 30.5? Is that the thing we should be looking at most or is it the other sections and so forth? And it's, it's, it's a little bit too much for us. I don't think having 15 people on the call looking at it is, is maybe the most effective way to understand it better. So my, my reaction from a process point of view is to try to not to accept or reject your proposal, but to ask, Todd, and perhaps if one other person wants to sit alongside him, to, if you're willing, Todd and plus one, to kind of sit down and understand the numbers so that we can compare, so that we can say, you know, we we, we had a kind of a 18 to 32, it's a 75-ish, about a 75% increase. Is this about that? <laughs> is it close to that? Now we've we've given you seventy five for just so for, for those that don't recall or didn't know we've given TCC seventy five percent of the funds that we granted them roughly close to seventy five percent. So what they're asking for is for the remainder. Um, I, you know, I think if if, if so, so it's hard for it's hard at least for me to tell. Are we close to getting? you know, the order of magnitude growth that we wanted, whether or not it's reflected precisely in that number, if there's sort of a 75% increase in some other number, that's a kind of an equally good number, but it's hard for me even to tell that from the data. John, I think- if John, someone... I think, just interject for a minute, I think what, Kate, what, what John's saying in, in his beautiful long-winded way is that this program for the major grants, the year of work and what we've given out, the people's money, which you're all doing uh, A plus work, no one. So what we're saying is it's about expansion. That's what the grant was for. So maybe we should get together, me, you, some other folks, and look at your data. And we can probably find a good way to have you describe that expansion and help us understand the expansion so we can complete the grant. Right. Because and I think that's what you're trying to do here. It's just for yeah. me, at least it's too confusing. I'm not, I don't, can't draw a conclusion. So are there other people who under, who can say that is that a good path to go down or, or do we want to have a substantive discussion about whether they've grown enough or not now? John, could I highlight, if we, uh, Kate, if you go back to the the first page with the initial um, snapshot, the I've done a lot of looking at this sheet. I find interesting numbers continuously when I'm looking at it and where to really um, 
look at the the core and the what I think shows a ton of growth. Um, if you the kids section, so that's the number of children we have per day. I mean, per month, sorry, per month um, that attend TCC for the after school program. So while it's not the 32 average daily and the daily number is much lower, you can see in section one, we'll just use that as the first example. And these three lines, the white is our initial year, 2020 to or 2021, 2022. And then the blue is 2022 to 2023. And then the, the final line is this most recent year. This I think shows the biggest growth and impact with what we've been able to do with the grant in just over a year. Um, you know, we finished out last year with 29 individual kids that have attended throughout the month, throughout that section. We finished section one with, I believe that's a 38. 38. So that's a nine kid increase. Um, and as you go month or section by section, it's quite remarkable. So section three, for example, uh, last year or the previous year, 26 children. This most recent year, 40 children showed, um, you know, attended. Sorry, does that mean though 29 kids come in one day? That number is 29. I'm not, I don't understand the monthly number. How do you get that? So the, the a number of kids, because of our business model and that it's flexible, um, you know, Kate really stressed why we're flexible Which and how individuals that, that show up in a month. Is yes. That... There's 40 okay. individual children. So they so might be separate... there five days a week. Yes. Or one day a month. Yes. It's just the number. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But, but so it's all comparable. It's, apples it's, apples. It's, it's number of number of children served right within yes. the month right. and not not relative to how many days each individual child came in right, right. I, I, want to come, I, I want to come back to this number but i want to give greg because I, I i want to come back and use those numbers to, to show something but i want to come ask greta first because she's got her hand raised and then i'll well, I was just going to, yeah, I was going to say that um, I, I have heard, you know, my kids aren't of the age to be able to use this program yet, but I've heard that what so, as Kate said, what so many people find so amazing about one of the things they find so amazing about this program is the fact that they can have, you know, 40 kids enrolled in the program for the month, but it, that particular family, they could say, oh, we're we can only do Monday, Tuesday, Thursday this week because of X, Y, Z. And one of the numbers I had heard, um, you know, like on Fridays in the winter, ski runners, it's, you know, it's basically like their numbers go down to, you know, probably a quarter of what they usually are or something like that. And so it's, I, I think that it is impactful to look at these numbers and look at, you know, the tan numbers here of the number of kids. And that's basically the the number that are enrolled and participating in the program per month um and those those do certainly exceed 32 but All right so well no no hold on the the, the... 32 is an average daily serve. Right. So what right. I, I'm saying, like, you know, I, I told I totally understand the yes, that metric, the 32 average for sure. Um, but they having the, the number, I mean, I, I wonder what the number would be if they said, okay, if you sign up for our program, if you're enrolling in our program, it needs to be Monday through Friday. You know, and then the I'm sure I'm sure, you know, the number of kids enrolled would probably go down, but then the average would probably go up or who knows. So Marion, I'll call on you in one minute. If we use this as the metric, the what 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 the grant called for was about a seventy five percent increase in in a metric. So seventy five percent growth is what you proposed. To uh, by the way, we didn't make that up, right? You proposed growing from eighteen to thirty two. That's about a seventy five, slightly more than seventy five percent growth. That's called seventy five percent. If we use this metric. In the five sections you have, the growth was 31%, 21%, 54%, 63%, 64%. Great growth, but you didn't meet the metric. And so I think to me, the question is, you grew, I, I think the reality is, don't take this the wrong way, I think, is you, you made it a proposal that you didn't, that where you didn't have a full understanding of your own metrics basically it's understandable as yeah. as uh, christy said you're learning or, or i'm sorry catherine said you're learning as you go i mean yeah. it's no shame john i agree with that and i th and you know we none of us here presenting were part of that original request 
And I, I agree with that wholeheartedly from an education, from a teacher perspective, right? Like we can't actually make a metric for growth in which we cannot legally by our license um, fulfill. So we can only, but in our license, I think it's 36, Christy, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I think it is 36. So, you know, I, and I apologize. I think that was an error. We are, we are. Hey, there's no need to apologize. We're where yeah. we're at. We want to find yeah. a way. To so, make this but I think, guys, I think, you know what I mean? We right. want to make it work. But the issue is right. too, that these major grants, it was about sustainability as well. So when we looked at all the centers, we looked at when you hire a teacher, you get X amount of children, you charge X amount of dollars, and this happens and happens. And that was part of your presentation flowchart as well. So now we're looking at just trying to understand, and we want to understand, we're yeah. looking at understanding how is this going to happen next year? How is it going to happen the year after that? Because that was part of what we undertook as a commission when we went and decided how to make these uh, grants and award them. It was It was the increase in capacity and the sustainability of that increase I'm sorry marion and then amy and then i'm gonna uh, well actually let me just get other questions from from edc members just for the moment uh, and let's try, let's try to make it as brief as we can marion and then other edc members yeah just one quick uh thought i have as i'm looking at these numbers um it doesn't really reflect the percentage of growth but i think one of the things i want to think about is um our goal as an edc in trying to increase capacity of childcare was to make it possible for families to stay in town in part because we felt like the biggest challenge for businesses was to have employees. And part of that is having our town, a place where people can get childcare and they can take jobs. And so I think if somebody goes and uses childcare one day a month or five days a week, it's still serving that end in terms of allowing a family member to still have a job. So I think I think that's one way to think about the numbers is it doesn't really matter. Like if you need childcare one day a month or five days a week, it still can prevent you from having a job and it still could allow you to have a job if you have that care. So, you know, just another way to look at the numbers. Larry, thanks, Mary. Larry. Yeah, um, I'm wondering if underlying all of this is a, uh, a financial need and, and uh, is a delay going to be an issue? Could, could someone from TCC address that? You know, because if we took, I think what Larry, correct me if I'm wrong, if, if we took a month to figure this out offline and so that we could get a better understanding of the numbers, is that, what what, what is the implication of that? I, I, maybe Christy can speak a little bit more to that, but... I can just say very quickly, I know that we are we are considering raising our rates um, to allow for the current existing program that we have. Um, that is a hard conversation to have as a board. Um, and so yeah, so the short answer is yes. It it is it is having a financial impact. We, you know, we are nonprofit. We're we're trying, we, we also very much need to retain staff, right? So like one of the core pro difficulties across all the childcare facilities, and I go to all of them in my work, is staffing. So, you know, we can, they can receive money, but if they don't have quality staff and they don't have staff, they can't run a program. Um, they have to close, they, you know, days have to, they could, just can't operate. So, um, I don't, Christy, do you want to add to that? I don't think just just to be clear. Sorry, the question isn't whether or not you know finance you, you need the money. The question is whether you need the money in the next thirty days. I, Larry, is that am I? Go ahead, Amy. Okay, um, I can. Christy will know a little bit more about financials, or she may. Um, our treasurer is not on here, of course. Um, I will say that we had submitted for this additional and final installment in January. And yes, we did need the money when we submitted it. Um, that goes in line with my question, or my question was going to be, um, I have poured over the um, the grants, the communication, and I'm not finding anywhere where there was a, um, a timeline on this either, or clarity whether we had to achieve the certain number before the whole 
grant was given. Um, it seemed to be a piece by piece. So we submitted and we would um, get the, the money. But was this a requirement that we needed to do this in a year of receiving the grant? 18 months, 24 months? Like what was, what is the, the time frame of this? Um, the purpose of the grant too, and I, Logan, I know had in-depth conversations with John and Elizabeth Reeves, our former president, um, about the grant at its core was to help give us security so that we could expand the program. We've been able to maintain the capacity for 32 children, or really up to 36, but that 32 number seems to be the magic number that's in the grant. Um, we have always maintained that availability, um, which meets some sense while we haven't hit the daily average, but I would say long Long answer short, um, yes, we needed the money when we submitted it in dis or in January. Okay, I, 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 just because in the interest of time, I, um, I think the best, I'd like to ask my colleagues on the ADC if you're comfortable with this proposal, which is basically to take this issue to continue to not make a decision to not as Todd said we we want to support the child care organizations we put more than five hundred thousand dollars of grants mm -hmm. into this and you have expanded capacity there's no question about that so congratulations and kudos for that um, sorry I'm just gonna I'm, I'm gonna just turn off the share for a second um, whoops can you uh, I think maybe Kate uh, I mean uh, Kathy yeah, there thank you. Um, I'm just going to suggest that we spend one month till the next meeting and basically dive into this. We've touched on a lot of issues, things that, you know, the issues that are outside the grant, mis understanding what the grant is. Um, I will tell you that that I have received um, the comments from at least one select board member who's concerned about the precedent of basically you know, at, the, at at a very surface level and possibly at a deeper level, but certainly at a surface level, we set a clear objective. It's not met, but you ask for the money anyway, we give it to you. Mm -hmm. I, you know, and so th I think that if we are going to give you the remainder of this grant, we need to have a clearer analytical understanding and justification for it without then we have right now at 715. And, and I hope we can get to that. I think our intention would be to get to it. But I think the way to get to it isn't to have 20 people try to figure it out. So unless are there any EDC members who are who are, who are uncomfortable with that? I saw Dan nodding his head and Larry, your question sort of suggested that you would if it's if unless it's a disaster, you'd be comfortable with that as well. Todd, you're Michael. Any is anyone just wave if you're uncomfortable? All right. Otherwise, just let me just suggest Todd and one other person who would just volunteer with Todd offline and just spend some time with the folks from TCC. Go over those numbers. The presentation is a great start. Thank you for that. Please email that. Actually, email it to Todd directly, if you don't mind. And Todd, would you distribute it to the rest of the EDC? Um, and then let's and then we'll put this on the agenda next time and we can, we'll commit to coming to it. Can we commit to coming to a decision at the next meeting? Is anyone uncomfortable with that? I see you're nodding. Okay, Dan, you're saying no, meaning yes, meaning you're not uncomfortable. Um, I, yeah, I'm not uncomfortable, right. and I do want to offer to work with you, Todd, if it, that would be helpful. Um, yeah, if I can there. introduce myself to the the ladies who are joining the call, I work for Save the Children. We're the largest independent um, nonprofit organization that's focused on kids. Childcare is one of our main and growing areas of focus. And so I just want to thank you for the work that you do. Um, because I work with grants like this, I know this is probably not an apples to apples. Um, I might be able to, to help you out, Todd. Awesome, Dan. Yeah. That's okay. Great. All right. So folks from TCC, thank you for the presentation again. Good job. And um, and we'll, we'll uh, please come back and we'll put you on the agenda for the next meeting. And Todd and Dan, give us an update when you're ready. So, yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Kate. Right. Thanks for all the info. Appreciate it. Thanks for everybody. Okay. Um, the next yep. item on the agenda is, is an update on uh, the select board meeting on the on the 9th, uh, a couple of days ago. Um, just a prelude to this, just to explain it. So the select board and the trustees jointly have asked every department and every volunteer commission to present an overview of their current activities and their priorities so that they can 
and we can, as one of those commissions, uh, act in a co co coordinated fashion. Um, uh, so that, for example, if uh, here's a, a real example, if the planning and zoning board is thinking about new policies to encourage housing and other development on the eastern part of Route 4, you know, where we call it the East End and beyond, and maybe maybe they, that should be coordinated. They, maybe the EDC should be aware of that and think about how we could fund things that might move that along or not, but at least we should be aware of it and working together. And there are dozens, I think, of examples. They don't all relate to the EDC. So each chair was invited to come and just basically give an informational presentation. I just want to run you through it briefly. I think it in it, the upshot of it, the action item for us is for us to review and either reconfirm or change or deb and debate <laughs> our priorities for economic development. Um, I know we've spent a lot of time uh, doing that. I think, to be honest, we've spent as much time, if not more, than any other commission in Woodstock. But the select board and the trustees have, if I can call it this, caught up with the idea that we should that there should be a strategy and we should all be aligned and it's a fantastic thing that they've done this it is a great it's a great start and i really applaud them and and eric also who i think is an important factor in calling on the select board and and trustees to do this and to or, orchestrating this so this is really good news for those of you that think this is like we've already talked about the priorities and so forth ad nauseum my apologies but i think this is an important discussion to have my presentation to them gave an overview of the EDC, and then it's, it ended on one page with the questions that I was going to suggest the EDC wrestle with over the next three months. I'm making that up. I don't know that we're going to have enough time tonight to wrestle with them, so maybe what we just do is I'll just pose them, and I'd like each of you to start really thinking about them, and we'll devote, other than the TCC, we'll devote the main, the entire portion of our next meeting, except for the TCC issue, to this question that you will have thought about for a month. So let me tee that up for you. Is that okay? Any any questions? Is this okay? So, all right. Let me share my screen, and uh, let me know if you can see this. And by the way, John um, went in front of the select board and spoke for like twenty five minutes. Everyone, it was really interesting to watch him do his thing. We're really grateful for it, John. It was a very well put together presentation and it was it was just solid, solid, solid. Thank you. Okay, well, that's great. Thank you, Todd, I appreciate it. Okay, uh, and this is on the website. Now, maybe this, the, the second most, the, I think the most important page is the last page, which is one of the questions we have to do. But the second most important page is this one. I'm a little bit embarrassed about this because for a very long time, I've been saying um, that the only words, that the only guidance that we have as to what we should be doing are these words, economic and community development. Because the third, uh, what's it called? Not a motion, uh, uh, an, a, a, uh, an article, sorry. Because the article on December 15th, this was the article on December 15th. Shall the voters of the town vote to have all revenue received put into an economic and community development reserve fund? But it turns out and I, I just, I mean, I searched through documents and documents, and that's the only thing I could find, and it's the only thing people told me was relevant. But in fact, Eric found something earlier in the year, which talked about what the EDC money was supposed to do. And it's, it's interesting. There were two articles earlier in 2015. The first one was, a, was the purpose of the money. Shall the voters approve, and they did, a 1% local options tax. Now, this is the new, this is the old options tax. It's on rooms, meals, and alcohol, not the one we just passed on everything else a few months ago. This is the original one. To be used for municipal economic development purposes. What does municipal economic development purposes mean? It means, it meant, and this is what the voters voted for, invest in the future health and prosperity of Woodstock, by promoting the town to potential visitors, residents, and visitors, and by funding special projects that benefit the community. There you go. So they voted a tax for that purpose. They voted to create the EDC fund 
with a purpose that they summarized as economic community development, and then they voted to put the money from the tax into the fund. So we now have a new set of words that are a little bit more instructive as to what it is we're supposed to be doing. And I wanna highlight what I think is the most important word. And you're gonna get a chance to disagree over the next few months when we debate these questions. But I think there's one word here that is most important and it is future. So. Right? We are, I think, supposed to be investing in the future. In, so I started with this. These are the new words that I will now repeat over and over again. This is, I'm going to replace the, the phrase economic and community development, which I've been saying to everybody, that's all that we know. Now I'm going to say, this is all we know. And at least we know a little bit more. This from here on, I can't highlight. Anyway, from the word invest to the word community. That's a really, it's really, I mean, it's, it's more guidance. And I think the word future is going to be really, really important as the town wrestles with how to deal with our financial needs and whether or not to use the EDC funds for the future or not, which is, I think, the question in front of the community and I think in front of us. Well, I think we, anyway. So then I basically just took them through. I'm going to go through really fast because you most of you know all of this. We're a volunteer board. We have nine members, blah, blah, blah. We, 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 here's what we, we do. We funded. We are funded by the 1% options tax. And for those, again, Dan, you're a new member. I don't know if you knew this. Others may not as well. This is our growth. This was a stub year, so don't worry about that. But starting in 2016, we grew continuously. We had a 50% or six, uh, sorry, a four, 35 or 40% hit during COVID. We came back. Uh, we were at 370,000 last year. This is calendar year. Our current forecast for this year is a, is flat. Basically, it's down about one percent or one and a half percent from last year. This, the first two quarters of 2024, which reflect the last quarter of last year and the first, basically, October, November, December, January, February, March. Our revenues during those period was down 1.7% from the same period a year before. If April, May, and June, and July, August, and September are down by the same 1.7%, we will end up with 364,000. So that's kind of our current forecast. If the rest of the year turns out to be, if the last two payments are the same as the first two payments, we'll be there. We've allocated almost all of the funding we have received. And for those old timers on the EDC who have served longer than I, you'll remember that in the first few years of the EDC, the community, their, one of their concerns was not what we were spending our money on, but what we weren't spending our money on. We weren't spending our money and we were accumulating surpluses or reserves. Well, now we've fixed that problem, <laughs> particularly in the last couple of years. We've received total revenue of 2.8 million all but about 50 or 60,000 of that is from the options tax. There's some minor other revenue that's not sustainable. So 2.8 million. We've awarded more than that in grants through as of today, including the grants we made, you know, a month ago. We've awarded 2.8 million of the 2.7, you know, 2, 2 million 822. We've awarded about $40,000 more than we've received. But that's because we have recaptured funds from some of these grants didn't spend all of the money we gave them. And they're now at a point where they're not going to. So we basically have encumbered 2,677,000. That leaves us with $106,000 of unencumbered funds. Marion, you asked, by the way, this includes the return of the book stock uh, money. But we also have $414,000 of funds that we that are encumbered, we owe them. We will owe them to someone, like seven thousand dollars to TCC. We may have to pay that, but they haven't gotten it yet, or they haven't asked for it yet. And so we have about five hundred and twenty thousand dollars in our account, but we have a hundred thousand dollars to work with, which is a little bit more than I said we might have after we, you know, in terms of to deal with for the rest of this year. That's this. So this is through the end of the year. We could spend one hundred and six thousand dollars, or we could at least commit one hundred six thousand dollars. And if we hit our revenue, we would be fully encumbered, but we would not have given out money that we, we wouldn't have to borrow, so to speak. 
We do our work in several different ways. The mechanisms you're all familiar, we have working groups, we have community grants, we have our own initiatives. We have the storefront incentive program, which is still in place. And then we have temporary programs. We, we tried grant writing support. If you remember two years ago, we funded that. It didn't work, but we tried it. I think it was worthwhile. We have made direct business grants and loans in emergencies, first during COVID and second during the flood last year. We have a revolving loan fund under consideration. I, I It's being loosely considered. I don't, if, if we continue at the pace we've continued, it won't happen during any of our lifetimes, but it is technically still on the table. Here, I think is an important, this is my perspective. And by the way, I was clear with the select board that this was my, I was sharing my perspectives, not every, you know, this isn't official, it wasn't an official document, but all of our five priorities are focused on growth. And I explained very quickly to the select board how these priorities could create growth. Growth by growth, I mean growth in the grand list and growth in the population, because that's that's what we need to survive financially. Increasing workforce housing supply, more housing leads to more residents and more business hours. Employees can live here. More business hours leads to more resident retention because we have things are open late at night and the restaurants are easier to take and people are happier and more visitors lead to more residents because people, we have very good anecdotal evidence that in, other than in a crisis like COVID, people don't move here without visiting first. Increasing childcare capacity, more capacity leads to more families staying in and also being able to move to Woodstock and fewer moving out to follow up on what Catherine was saying earlier. Marketing Woodstock, more visitors leads to more people considering to move here, which leads to more people moving here, hopefully. Supporting events, more things to do, retains more residents, attracts more visitors, leading to more people considering to come here, visit here, leading to more people to consider moving here and then moving here. And then rejuvenating and beautifying the downtown area. Better downtown experience retains more residents. It attracts visitors. More people consider. More people come. So it's all about growth. And growth is always about the future, by definition. I want to kind of highlight these catchwords that I think are going to be really important. Our grants have been highly focused on our five priorities. If you look at the six largest things we've given, they're all our priorities. Six hundred. This is since inception. 600,000 to, to marketing, 500,000 to childcare, 390,000 to housing, 230,000 to beautification, and 170,000 to events. The only thing that's in that top five is direct business support. And that was most two thirds of that is the wage supplement program during the flood last year. And the rest of, and most of the rest of it was the COVID emergency loans. A small amount of that is, is, is um, direct grants to businesses, mostly not-for-profit businesses, some for-profit businesses. And then and then in the first years, planning was a you know significant um, thing. One, we have shifted significantly our funding to programs which I'm going to say have the most direct impact on growth. In other words, if we build more houses, the grand list goes up. There's no step in between. If we create childcare capacity, it's not quite as direct, right? The grand list doesn't go up, but people are easier to move here and they move here and maybe they build a house and the grand list goes up or they or the popula and the population goes up. Marketing is a little bit more removed. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it's, you know, people get more here about Woodstock, they get more interested, they come and visit, they think about moving here, they move here. So what let's look at what we've shifted. The blue bars are from inception until 2021. The orange bars are the last two and a half years, from 20, January 2022 to today. Marketing, we've cut back significantly. We've increased child care, which is pretty direct. We've had a huge increase in housing, which is very direct. And everything else, uh, events, uh, you know, is, I think, not as direct. That's gone up. Everything else has gone down. And I want to point out just, um, just something that I'm personally, because I'm cheap, is we've reduced our administrative costs really dramatically. While I think maintaining, I don't think we're better at administration, but I don't think we're worse. <laughs> so we save some money. So we've shifted, I think we've really focused on the things that we think are the best growth for the buck. Um, although we're maintaining the five priorities. And then I gave them a quick update on housing, 13 new units, 
10 directly by our incentive programs, three from the home share program, which we funded the launch of so we can take credit for it. And we talked about expanding childcare capacity. And again, you know, despite th th this, this number is, uh, is old, is, does not reflect the data that we talked to. I think this is an understatement of what their growth is based on what we heard half an hour ago. I don't know what the exact number is or what the right way to measure it is, but but we can measure it more accurately or you know, a little bit more easily because of the nature of the programs with the others. And we've you know we've we've increased uh, by eighty or ninety slots in these other programs. It's it's really been a significant success. And there's by the way, it, with with uh, WCCC, while there's some risk to that program, there's an opportunity for them to grow even further. They've managed to to um, uh, to um, hire 10 full-time teachers now. Is that correct, Todd? I think it's 10. Yeah, that's that's correct. And their teachers are also specialists for um, yeah. children at risk and whatnot. Yeah. And but and that's not to say it's not to put you know to put shade on any of the other folks. No, they, no, they've all done no, a, great done a job. Great, yeah, that WCCC has done an exceptional job at hiring and recruitment and retention, and, and others have done well also. So I just highlighted these two programs, which are probably the most, which are two, at least two of the three most direct impact on, on growth uh, and economic and, and uh, uh, on future growth. So uh, that leads us to, I, so that's the information that I shared. And then I said that I thought that the select board was wrestling with the question of what to do with the EDC money. People, we have to, you know, admit this or understand it. People are, you know, casually saying, well, why don't we just take the EDC money and use it to pay for the acquisition of the water company or to pay for the renovation of town hall or to reduce the bond for the high school or to, you know, to pay for the waste treatment plant. It's a fair question. If you can't afford those tax increases and you don't know how we're going to pay for it, it's a very fair question. And we have to be part of the discussion as to what is best for Woodstock. And so I said that these are the questions that I was going to ask the EDC to wrestle with over the next few months. And these don't have to be the only questions. I, the reason why I'm sharing this with you is so you can begin to come up with your own way of thinking about this and your own way of formulating it. And again, we'll start the next meeting with your thoughts about that, not mine. But here were mine. And I said, look, there. Are th and I said, by the way, this isn't about the EDC. This is about the money that funds the EDC. <laughs> the, 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 no, we're not taking it personally, and I don't think anyone is is out to get us. The first question is, how should the options tax be allocated at a strategic level, not whether it's marketing or housing or child care, but whether it's even a one level above that? Is it day-to-day -day municipal operations? In other words, taxes are going to go up by 6% this year. Let's use the EDC money and make them only go up by 3%. Should we use it for deferred maintenance? Now, deferred maintenance is essentially every major capital project that is being presented to the town. And it's a sad thing to say that. But if we build a new high school, with the exception of the high school, which is in fact both deferred maintenance and some capacity for growth, if we repair the town hall, if we repair the water system, if we repair the sidewalks, if we repair the wastewater treatment plant, we are not setting ourselves up for growth. We're just fixing what we have failed to invest in for 50 years. It's deferred maintenance. So is it day-to-day -day operations? I think, is it deferred maintenance? Or is it investment in future growth? Investment in future growth could be our five priorities. It could be one of those five or two of those five. Maybe you favor childcare, or you favor marketing, or you favor housing, but it's all future growth. It could even be infrastructure. And here's something I'll just say that Ray, you know, Ray Bourgeois, the chair of the select board, said, well, what if we use the EDC funds? Why can't the EDC funds invest in, in the water company and in the sewer system, but not to repair the old stuff? Let the taxpayers pay for that. Why can't the EDC pay to put in water and sewer infrastructure to a big property in the East End so that a developer would find it economic to build 25 or 50 new units of housing? I said to him personally, that is an investment in the future. Infrastructure can be an investment in the future if we're investing in if we're investing it for the future, not to repair the past. So well, we did that with BCC uh, or with the Bridgewater well, Childcare, essentially. We've done exactly. Well, we did it actually with all of the 
Yes, correct. So the word infrastructure is not a dirty word. In, in, in my view, infrastructure can be used for growth or it can be used for repair of the past. And if and so if I look at that word future, it's that one word that it was on the first slide, I would basically say, sure, we can build a sewer system and water system as long as what we're building it for is to build new housing or to build new childcare or to, you know, whatever for future growth. So the first question is basically for the EDC, are we going to pick the third item here as a town? Are we going to say that's what, are we going to reconfirm what we voted on in 2015? And by the way, if we don't, we have to re-vote in my view, because the because the town was very clear what the town voted for was investing in the future. Those are the words that the, that the uh, article said, invest in the future. If we don't pick this, we don't need an EDC. But we but there but we do need the town needs to reconfirm that that's what the EDC funds are going to be used for. And if that's the sel selection, if that's what we choose to continue to do, then the question is, what's the best way to do it? And now we've got our five priorities. Let's re-examine them. Let's think about if there's a sixth or a seventh. Let's see if we want to eliminate two or three. Let's do what we've done, but do it again and say, you know, what should our priorities be? And we come up with we come up with the new version or the same version of this page. And so I, that's what I, that's what I've sort of promised the select board we would do and come back to them in the next months without knowing exactly what the timetable is. They haven't given a timetable. And I think they will look forward to that and they will be want to be part of that debate and so forth. Okay. So I'm going to stop sharing and, and then just, let's just really have a process discussion. I, I don't, I, I don't want, we don't have time to, I, I want to give you all a month to chew on, on this. So, um, so any comments or thoughts about the process? Mm -hmm. Or would you be ready and comfortable to start this discussion next time? Joe, are you swatting flies or are you waving your hand? Joe first and then Todd. But, but Joe, you're muted, so. Joe, you're muted in Zoom. All right. You, Todd, why don't you go first, and Joe, okay. keep working on the unmuting. You can unmute. So, so the, the only process question I have, is this a waste of time in terms of what are we, if we have clear on the record wishes of the voting body, right, and we you found that data, we already have our five priorities we came up with. I'm not saying I'm against doing any work to rethink them or go through all the stuff you mentioned at all I, I think it's always good to think it through even though we just recently spent time on that is that necessary in reality because will it have any change in outcome of what the select board wishes to do with this money yeah that's a good question i i don't know that's a fair question to ask joe i'm gonna wait till you're unmuted to call on you we can't hear you so my yeah, you know, I think that was well put. I'm sorry, I I missed your presentation. Um, you know, I'm glad that all these groups are making these presentations. I was able to sit on the Parks Commission, which I'm also a Parks Commissioner, uh, in getting to hear kind of a lot of the groups being able to come together and maybe congeal some ideas where we can work together more closely. Um, John, I I just I wanted to hear you elaborate a little bit more. And sorry, I got handed a baby about halfway through your presentation. Um, but I was kind of curious because um, I, I guess I want to understand better the role of our commission um, in that you do state that like if it infrastructure and some of these things are, then maybe we don't need an EDC. I, I don't understand it that way. I understand it that we just need to add that as a priority and be ready to become infrastructure uh, tycoons or whatever you want to think, however you want to think about it. No, 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 no. Sorry. I, I want to be clear that, that on that page, what I was saying is that there are three, there are three ways you could use our funds. Putting it against the operating budget, funding deferred maintenance, or investing in the future. 
infrastructure could be in any of those three categories. If you pick the first two, if you say that let's take the three hundred fifty thousand dollars and put it into the general the operating fund, which will reduce taxes, or if you say take the three hundred fifty thousand dollars and put it towards any of the deferred maintenance projects we have, which is infrastructure, th there's no need for us to be here. They have we have to spend. They're, they're doing. They're already doing a study on all the infrastructure projects. The wastewater treatment plant is going to cost twenty six million dollars. Take the three hundred fifty thousand dollars from the EDC and use it to reduce that. We don't. There's no. You know, there's, there's already there's already decisions and groups being made. It's only if it's only if they want to use the funds to invest in the future, which is what the voter asked. That we need to continue to have an EDC. So I'm not, and I'm not suggesting we debate that. I mean, I think we can, you know, in, instead of debating it, we can say, look, the voters voted for this. It's not deferred. You, 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 you if the, the voters said invest in the future, fixing the water company isn't investing in the future. It's fixing the past. So we're not going to do that. And and you can't. We don't think you can do that either, unless you take another vote. So we're going to focus on investing in the future. That's all I mean. John, that, John, that's exactly right. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Go ahead, Michael. Sorry, hold that, on. A that that, that was the point I tried to bring up before I tried to figure out how to mute myself. I mean, that is specifically it. Yeah. We are required by statute to invest in the future. Right. It is so stated. And in order to divert from that, it right. would take another vote from the community. Do you want to accept what was originally voted on? Or do we vote for something different? Yeah. I mean, that's basically the bottom line. Yeah. And I, I think it's just, I think you did a fantastic job just researching that. It's, it, no, I don't no, know. I didn't. Eric it's did. It, it's, it, it's, it, it's, it's, it's it in a nutshell right there. It is by statute that we are required to invest in the future. And if you yeah. want to change it, bring it to the, bring it to the town. Uh, other, I, I want to come back to Todd's question, which is a very fair question of really. <laughs> if I can sum up Todd's Todd's question is really, do we need to do this again? Ah. Uh, other comments, Greta. Um. So yeah, I I I mean, along the lines of what Todd said, um, I think that a lot of this year since, or I've been on this board for a year and a half, and we do bring for a lot of different initiatives and priorities that we discuss we talk about okay what are our goals what are what are we all about what are we working towards and um i think you did an excellent job with that um i'll, I'll echo what everyone else said that presentation is amazing I, I i enjoyed going through it and kind of seeing the graphs and stuff and um found it very interesting and i think that what the select board my understanding of what the select board is doing is wanting to get that information from everyone and then they're likely going to be the ones telling us what our marching art orders are going forward and i feel like as an advisory board it makes sense for us to have these discussions for sure to to figure out you know we have a lot of interesting skill sets in this group and 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 can shed a lot of light on what the town should be investing in but i think ultimately we're probably going to be given um given a, 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 the opinion of the select board, which will be, you know, what we end up going with. Okay, uh, other comments, other thoughts? All right, well, let me just, let me just suggest at least, well, let me just suggest two reasons for us to have this discussion next time. And I just ask you again, because we're kind of coming to the end of our time, or we could be. But by the way, I'm in Nantucket, which is why my expectations for time of this meeting is shorter than usual. Um, I think there are two reasons why we, there are two things we need to consider. The first is that I don't think, I think the select board needs to bet, I don't think the select board understands the way we understand the value of the different five priorities. I think we've thought about them and talked about them and, and looked at and allocated funds to them and considered proposals in each of those five areas. And I think we have 
a comprehensive knowledge that each of those five things does support growth and how it does and and to what extent it does and how much we should be money we should be putting in and i and i think if we Greta, and i'm not sure if you're suggesting this if we simply if if the process is simply that the select board acts on what they are currently thinking given what they know i don't know that that's the best way to serve woodstock and i'm not criticizing them they have they don't have they haven't had the hours that we've had going through that i think they need to hear from us even if it's a restatement of the five priorities which would be fine it's if even if it's a deeper explanation of why those five things are on the list and why they should stay on the list I, I, that would be i think they need to hear that so that they can give us guidance i think without more interaction with us and i don't think my presentation was sufficient it was intended to be a short presentation you know i think they won't be equipped to make a good decision and i think they would agree with that so that's the first reason the second is that i think that we have for, we have moved from smaller things to fewer bigger things but we haven't moved all the way up the level, all the way up to where we could be. So for example, we are, as Joe said, by, I forget the word, by- by Statute. Uh, by statute, right, or article, right. By statute, we have to invest in marketing unless the voters change. But the voters have told us that some of our investment has to go to marketing. Fair enough. We think we've optimized that. Let's just say we keep investing what we invest now in marketing. What if we put the entire rest of that money into one thing, not just one topic, but one initiative? What if we basically said, we want to find a developer, we want to take three years, we want to find a developer who's going to build 75 units of housing in Woodstock, and we're going to take the $300,000 that's left after the marketing budget a year, $300,000 a year for 20 years, uh, and we're going to put it towards that project which means that we might be able right, to making that project happen. Now, by the way, that, that may be more than what's needed to make the project happen, or it may be wholly inadequate to make the project happen, either of which would mean that we'd be wasting our time because either we'd be wasting our money or we no one would even, even if we did that. But I don't think we've considered that. And by the way, there may be another big thing. I mean, it might be, you know, buying up all the buildings downtown for local ownership with that money so that we can have rents low so that businesses can pay, you know, managed rents. I don't think we've done, done that last step. I don't know that we should. But I'm pretty confident that if that's what we were doing now, there would be no discussion in town about taking EDC money and using it to reduce taxes. That's not a reason for doing it. But if, th if that's what we were doing, if that's what was on the table this year, I, you know, okay, folks, we can either take the money and use it to pay for the sewer plant, or we can use it to take the developer that the EDC or the select board or someone has found to build 75 units of housing. I think the majority of people would vote for the 75 units of housing. And I don't think anyone else is going to put that on the table. So at least I want to have that debate, whether that big thing is housing or the big thing is childcare or the big thing is buildings or the big thing is something that's not on our list. I feel like there's a hole there and I don't know that we can fill it, but I don't want to let that opportunity pass. So that's the argument for doing it. Maybe it's not, you know, so Todd. Maybe it's just a, a maybe it's not a, an investing time on the five priorities we've already spent a year on. Maybe it's, trying to analyze one or five or three of those priorities and try to figure out economic impact. Like for example, you know, we can correlate the economic impact of a simple BCC Bridgewater. It's 87% of Woodstock people. How, who's there? What's the added to the grand list? How many kids are in the school district? What did that cost us? And we can do that with the housing stuff that done in her group. We can look at marketing and, and look at increase in retail sales. So maybe it's, thinking about it that way so we can present them and say, hey, like I talked about um, when pitching the, the BCC thing, because, you know, certain select board members were uncomfortable, perhaps getting stuff outside of the Woodstock boundaries. Uh, we talk about, you know, this is building a power plant. This is your 401k. This is a compound investment. So maybe if we just present 
aspects of what that is with this money and see that return in a numerical sense. We don't have to go through the brain drain of reprioritizing the priorities we reprioritize. And I'm just throwing that again. I'm happy to do anything that anyone needs to throw it out there. Deborah. Yeah. Deborah. You're muted. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is interesting. This feels very, uh, you know, very much like what we were talking about, um, uh, Todd, when we first started working together a couple of years back, where we yeah, it's exactly I was it, exactly yeah, yeah, what you just said was exactly what we were talking about about taking a, a larger thing over a, a number of years and and really building something. So I think that there's been a progression towards the fact that we have substantial large issues in town. And that the town isn't going to be um, given that money and that we need to figure out a way, you know, we're not an endowed town anymore. So um, I love the idea of saying, okay, take one of, you know, having a conversation, evaluating what one of certain three different pro uh, priorities that would make a huge difference, which I really loved what you just said, um, uh, uh, John, the housing that we were talking about, Todd, makes a huge amount of sense. What you were talking about, about bringing the town back to being owned by the town and buying the buildings in town, that's that will change the entire makeup and the possibility of what happens in this town. And I think it would also allow for people to invest in it in a different kind of way. That's, that's a stunning example. And basic infrastructure, which is if we don't have water or sewage, we're not going to have a town soon. So those those feel like and that those are the kind of things that we can can look into and make a decision. Um, I want to bring up one thing, which is that the money in smaller ways has made a difference. And what I would ask is that potentially we have um, somebody who's helping uh, people in the town get the grants that are available elsewhere to do those smaller projects, you know, and how, because we had that a year ago and to bring that, if we're going to do one larger thing to also have somebody in that role to help people find the grants that are out there for the smaller projects um, in, you know, that are available through them, um, that are available, but not through us. Okay, thanks. I think Joe was has maybe the last comment. Go ahead, Joe. I, you know, I, 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 um, I, I think this is a great discussion. It really is. Um, the idea of pouring all the money into one thing, one, if one project or one proposal is, is something we'd have to be very, very careful about. I think, um, I don't agree with John that, you know, if we put, for example, put it all into housing, nobody would complain about it, or the majority of people would accept it. I'm not so sure about that. I think the housing issue is important. I think it would be a great thing to do, but I'm not so sure everybody would agree with me or you about that, or or even the majority of people would. You might be so, right. So I think, you know, we'd have to be very careful about that. Uh, buying downtown, yeah, that would work. Um, I mean, it's been my experience that, you know, you always get pushed back from town, especially people who've been here for a while. Who's, and I think we experienced it already when we get into marketing about crowds and people coming in. And I completely agree that we've got to expand we should expand the grand list, but I think we'd be, well, it would be more accepted, uh, God, how do I say this, if it was done without a direct 70 unit development all at one time. Uh, I, th I think we'd have to be very careful about that. Yeah, I, and maybe even Larry could expand on that because he's lived here longer than I have. I don't think he's taking you up on your offer. I, that, <laughs> yeah, I don't think he is. <laughs> uh, fair enough. I, yeah. All right. Let's let's. Uh, um, 
But I think we should keep talking about it. I think it's a great but, discussion. Well, it really question. is. So if everyone would just digest this discussion, if there's one thing to think about, you know, the TCC thing will be taken care of by Dan and, and Todd offline. Um, if everyone would just give some thought to this and we'll start up next meeting and, and take it from there. Uh, there's one more topic, if, if that's all right. It can, uh, Larry, sorry, go ahead. Last comment. Yeah. Uh, perhaps a minor point, but you have down as a child care as one of our priorities. Um, at some point, we need to sort of say we've we've done that, and I would take sort of take it off that list. I agree. In terms of future expenditure, uh, agreed. I, I I haven't heard anyone suggest that we need to do more. So right. for now, so yeah, agreed. I, I leave it on there because I want to get credit for it, not because I think we need. To <laughs> okay, it. fair enough. Um, all right. Any, any are, are we comfortable with the instruction to, or the, everyone agrees that we're going to chew on this. Okay. Uh, okay. The last is these tourism working groups. Um, Oof. the, 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 um, fortunately in parallel with, and perhaps encouraged by, I don't know, but certainly in parallel with our working on many of these issues. The trustees have taken up three specific issues. Uh, food, lack of food during peak season. These are all peak tourism issues. The lack of food on Sundays and Mondays are just the lack of food generally, but I think focused on Sunday and Monday. Uh, an aspect of the crowds business, specifically the buses uh, uh, and uh, lack of bathroom capacity during peak period. Um, I think to some extent we created working groups because no one else was creating working groups, <laughs> but now the trust, and, and we always knew that on any of those three topics, at least, and maybe on all of our temporary working groups for peak, peak tourism issues, we would have had to go through primarily the trustees to, you know, I think we knew that. But now that they've started working on them and are coming up, they're the one, they're coming up with specific ideas as well. A few of us have talked about stepping back from being the idea generators, at least in those areas where they're generating the ideas now, which is great. I think they're in a posi better position to generate them than maybe than we are. And, and basically be doing with them what we did with the childcare providers, which is helping them to come up with funding proposals that they can present to us in a format that we can approve them, which is now, right, the trustees have, out of the 119 grants that we've made, the trustees and the select board combined have put forward one proposal to us for $365 to pay for the insurance fees for two or three not-for-profit vendors to be able to serve food on the green. And yeah, that was like last year, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's their so, new one. <laughs> right. And so I think that their problem solving, I mean, if anyone who has been to a village trustee budget meeting knows that their ability to solve e any of these three issues, let alone all of them, or to address them fully would be significantly enhanced if they didn't feel like all of the money was coming out of their budget. And I think we have agreed that as part of our statutory requirement to promote Woodstock via marketing, part of that is to be responsible for the negative consequences of, of, of peak tourism. I mean, that, frankly, it's better to, you, you can't market a product that is you know, that gets broken by by the problems. We it's part of our marketing to make it to fix those problems. So so I would like to suggest at a minimum that in those three areas, food, buses, and bathrooms, and I've already suggested this to the EDC members, Todd and Larry on bathrooms, uh Deborah on crowd slash, and I'm gonna say the buses piece of that, and Joe on food, that each of you should go off and instead of thinking go off, approach the select board and say to them, you know, let us work with you on, uh, great, you do it, you do it, you do what we were doing because you're better at it. Uh, let's work with you. Please, please consider 
if solving the problem, if EDC funding will help you solve the problem better or bigger or sooner, please work with us and we'll work with you to put together proposals to come back to the EDC with as soon as you need it. Does anyone disagree with that? And maybe we extend that to all of the other work. The, there's there's um, traffic and safety and information and so forth. And maybe we do the same thing with those also. But at least for this month, for those three, um, that, that seemed to me, Todd and Larry, was there anyone else in that? I mean, me, Todd and Larry as, as the right, and Joe, sorry, as the right way to go about it. So they were each gonna go, and Deborah, I didn't have a chance to talk to you about it as well. Does that sound like a, it's a little bit of a change of our role, It's it, but it shift, but I think it's much better. <laughs> and we, they, we, we all thought it was much better. Anyone object to that or any comments about it? I don't, I don't completely understand. I think what you're saying is you want us to go to either the trustees or the select board or both and say, we have a problem with not enough food vendors uh, during peak times. What do you think we should do? Uh, well, two modifications to that. One is it's really just the trustees in these okay. cases, specifically, right. it just happens to be. The second okay. is, Instead well, of said instead, select one earlier, that's why. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. It's just the trustees, and the second is they know we they have a problem. I would just go to them. Just the the introduction to the. I would say to them, since you're working on this, you're better at it than we are. Please, we'll stop. We'll stop coming up with solutions. You're coming up with this. You seem to be coming up with the solutions, and you're evaluating options. Would you please? Would EDC funding help you to do that better, faster, bigger? And and tell us how we can help you. Let's put to, let's help you put together proposals to come back to the EDC for funding. It's just the tone of it is slightly the, different. The idea being that they could have a great idea and dismiss it because they don't have the money for it. Right. But maybe we have the money for it. And that great right. idea. Don't dismiss don't dismiss the idea because you don't have the budget. We're prepared. We think we should be funding some of this stuff. We think you should be figuring it out and we should be funding it. Or some of it anyway. We, now, which is why I go back to that, you know, we have about $100,000 of unencumbered funds through the end of this year. Now we have other, pro we have a marketing, you know, a website project that we may need. So I'm not promising anything, and you know, we, we're not in a position to promise it, but I don't think they've thought about that yet. And I think we ought to proactively go to them and say, you know, we're here, we're, we're ready to help if you need our help. Or we're ready to consider helping if you need our help, I guess. Is that just Joe? Does that make sense? I think it's what you were saying, but I I, I think so too. I I I just wonder if um uh, in, in terms of timing, that isn't uh, something that they do think. I don't think they do think of oh, why don't we do this and why don't we do that? And they haven't participated in that kind of thought process in the past. So you know, it might say, yeah, that's a good idea. We'll get together, think about it, and then we'll get back to Joe. And says, okay, fine. But no, in no, the no. meantime, if you want more vendors, you know, um, no, no, Joe, I think that's during, during peak times, you gotta, you gotta start talking about it right now. I, I don't think you're correct. I think, I know that Lisa Lawler has, I think they're investigating very specific initiatives and they've already started doing that. Okay, I think all right, great, great. Okay. Beth? Yeah, I just wanted to say, I was at the trustees meeting Tuesday night. And um, Lisa did an amazing thing by putting together lists of buses, et cetera, which is just amazing, the work she did. But they also are working with uh, the Indian food folks. Um, so they are really um, being proactive on the food the and the bathrooms because they're willing to, um, you know, pay for porta potties, behind the, the courthouse, et cetera. So I, I don't think that you would get the pushback. I think that they would embrace um, the help. Right. We may, we may find out that's wrong, but but I agree with Beth. Yeah, that's, Beth knows more about it than I do, but that was my sense of this. Uh, other comments about this? I mean, there's, there's no downside to this, right? I, I don't think, you know, this may not, this may not be fruitful, but it may, it may be the way to deal with all of the tourism issues going forward to, for us to, you know, but at least in these three areas, which are three big areas, food, buses, and bathrooms, I think they are actively working on those. So, 
So anyone object to that? To setting Todd, Larry, Deborah, you're new to this conversation. Are you okay with this? Or? Okay, and Joe, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Okay, Any anything else that we should touch on? I just want to say that we know you made up those uh, bar charts, so good move. They feel totally. very yeah. good to me. But Brad, they look, too. The, the key to being a good consultant is is that the bar charts look <laughs> realistic. Yeah, nothing yeah. was, yeah, yeah, it was good. Down a little bit, but not too much. So. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? Okay. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Who, okay. Second. Is there a second? Everyone? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thanks, everybody.